Hi, good day. Hi, welcome back. Long time. All right. So I had to record this a couple of times because it didn't record properly and blah blah blah. Whatever. Uh, let's get to it. So what I want to show you. So I have already started some text there, but let's let me rewind a bit. Um, so sometimes, so last time we did, uh, well, last that video, um, some two videos back, we did table, and I said that oh. Uh, you can have reasons to use table for laying out something for doing like a list and so on. But um, for a while, people are using tables to do this layout of their website itself. And so, for example, you might see a website. This is very typical website, um, very common type of thing you would see is a header, a footer, some content, and then maybe some site navigation. And this site navigation might actually occur on the left side or the right side, or you might have two sites navigation, you know, some navigation on the side here and the navigation on the side there. You can also have tap navigation also, right? So I'm not saying by any means that that is the only way, but this is fairly typical. The general idea is that you have header, you have some center area content, and then you have footer. Whether or not the site navigate, the navigation is on the side or it comes at the top or maybe even bottom, but just this general idea. So if you look at this web page, what you're really seeing is that there's sections to it, right? Or there, 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 there's certain this idea that certain things seems to be wanted to group together. And so um, you can use a table to do this, right? If you look, you just look like a table where the first row spans two columns, the second row, you know, um, is it, just have two uh, cells and you're somehow fixing the width of this cell to be, I don't know, let's say 20 or 30% of the entire width and or maybe you have a fixed number, you might want this to be like 400 pixel and no more. And then this side is the remainder, the remaining, right, width. And then maybe you might fix the size, the height of it, sorry, right? And um, same thing with a footer, you might fix the height and you might say the width is 100% and blah, blah, blah. So you could totally do this with a table and people used to do it. After a while of the guys who control the HTML standard, the W3 consortium or whatever they call, uh, they, um, you know, watch how people are using the web and so on. And then they're quick to, or try to be quick in terms of adopting new uh, technologies that people are trying to use. Or they, when they see people trying to um, do things and it look like a pattern, like this idea of a header or footer, they start coming up with new tags and so on to help you out. And so one of the tags they came up with was this diff tag and so table tag was there very early and then the dig tag came up sometime afterward um excuse me ah excuse me ah so uh, i have a bit of cold too anyway and so uh the diff tag came up so they did the diff tag so let's take a look at how I might divide my page. You could think of the diff tag as dividing your, your HTML, right? And so the diff tag is called a block um, tag, and there are a few of them. Um, there's the H1 tag and so on, H2, H3, all those guys that we saw, um, the paragraph tag. And the reason it's called back tag is because the browser tend to put a new line, um, a brick in before and after the tag. And we'll see that. So. Uh, let's just do, let me copy this content here. I don't want to lose it. Um, um, copy and then uh, let's do cut it. And then let's just do example with a diff tag. So I would say HTML and then I'm going to say head. And so we haven't done this in a while. And so title and diff tag or block tag, whatever. Um, and then I'll say body. And then, so this is the H1 tag and it says, hello, I, I am H1. And let's do a paragraph tag. And so, hello, I am a P tag. And then we'll do a diff one. Div. Uh, come on. And let's just do another div tag. Oh, 
Okay. So, um, so yeah, something like this. And let's put a ton of crap text in there. And I don't know. I should go look for some text somewhere anyway. But so let's save it. And let's go over here and refresh and see how it looks, right? And so you can see the hello, the H1 tag is, you know, in line by itself. It breaks afterward. You get the P tag. And same thing you have break after and the diff tags also. And, uh, you know, you can squeeze it this way, blah, 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 blah. And so those are block tags because it automatically, you know, breaks and start, basically you think of it as green on a new line, right? And so the, the diff tags are block tags and they allow you to divvy up your page. Uh, but it's more than that. You can nest diff um, block tags, the diff tags. You can nest other block tags within it. There's also another tag that was introduced at the same time called a span tag. And we're going to cover that a little bit later. The span tag is not a block tag. And you could change it to operate like a block tag. It's called an inline tag. It's more like how the, um, you know, some of the other tags that you might have. Uh, the uh, bold tag. This is bold. And, you know, and if I put something immediately after this, like italics or something, you'll see it's in line, right? And the same thing with the span tag. Um, and we'll see the use of the span tag. And notice it doesn't break before or even something that comes after it doesn't break, right? And so these are inline tags. I'm very different from the block tag. And you, for the span tag, you definitely don't want to nest a block tag inside of it. That's not a low. Your browser may try to do something sensible, but try not to do that. But with like the diff tag, you can certainly nest out of black tags in it or even inline tags in it. It's like this generalized tag for dividing up your page. And so you want to think of it that way. So let's say um, I want it. Um, and so, yes. So this is with a diff tag. You, it's a block tag. Now, um, there are a number of things, options you can set on a diff tag in terms of the nice thing is if you think of your page as being carved up into sections, um, you divide it up into sections. You can move those sections on top of each other. You can move them around. So, for example, it's possible that you can have a div tag um, like this and have another one here or have this content flow on the here. So, this red, um, con the content section here actually, you know, looks like this. Um, uh, let me see. Um, maybe if I duplicate this and I bring this under here. And then I do this, right? Then I do that. So this would all be considered, you know, um, part of the content tag, right? Because you don't see the line there, of course, right? So if you wanted some, your text to flow like this, div tag will allow you to do all those sort of things, right? Um, there are a number of settings, and so you might be like, well, Varel, if you told me to the div tag of black tag, and if this div, if side nav was a div, and then content was another div, content would go below it, sort of like this, instead of being to the side of it. Well, that is true, but there are also some properties you can set on the div tag that says, for example, I want you to float to the left or I want you to float to the right. And so when you do that, if I set um, this tag to float, all right, we can, we can certainly do it and see it in action. But I don't want to spend too much time on a div tag and I'll show you why. I, I'm gonna cheat. So okay. So <clears throat> so let's do this. Let's create a div tag and I'll call it div um, and I'll give the name ID header for example and then I'll say this is my header and then I'll create another tag and I'll give ID I'll set the attribute ID to um, side nav and you know say that and I'll do another tag ID equals content and um, yes let's do that that way and then maybe I'll do another one called diff ID equals footer and then I said you know this is my footer okay and so when I go back here and let's refresh my page uh, this is what you see, right? Um, doesn't look anything like, but I could do a couple of things. Remember, each tag, um, they have some attributes that you can set. One of them here, I set as ID, but they have some common one, or global one. 
And so all tags pretty much support um, a style attribute. And I could say style and some of the, so the, the way you do style, this is some of the CSS stuff, cascading style sheet, CSS. And CSS is a way to modify, it's a language, yet another language that's supported by your browser to modify the properties that you're, that are supported by the HTML tags. And we haven't covered that yet, so you just have to just accept it and just trust me on this. So one of them is color. So if I do color, it represents the color of all the text that's nested inside of this diff tag until it's changed again. So I could say red. And so now all the text inside of this div is gonna have red. I could also do text dash align. I could set center. And so now the text there is centered inside of this div. And so I make one for my editor. And I could do, um, you know, um, background, for example. I could say background dash color is, you know, gray, for example. And that doesn't go well with the red, but maybe um, green does. Maybe not go well, but let's just leave it as that. And I'll do make this um, white. Right. And so you can see now the extent of this, um, this div. And notice as I extend the page, um, this div is taking up the entire width of the page. Without me, I actually haven't say that. Well, what is the side nav? Why, why don't we style the side nav also? Are we going to say style? I want, um, I'll, I'll leave that color there. But uh, let's say our background color is gray. And um, I want uh, the width to be fixed. So width, I want it to be fixed at like 200 pixels. As you can see, what happens there? So let's do 160 maybe pixels. And now I fixed the width to be 150 pixels. And then look at this, right? It doesn't change, it's fixed width. And there are a number of things you can set to like the absolute position or that it should be relative to the thing that the, it contains it. So there are a number of things you can do with a div. Um, it's this guy, let's do a style on this. And, um, one of the things, uh, one of the things probably I can set here is float, which I said float left. And it's already kind of left anyway, but notice as soon as I change that, how it allows the, the div below it to come up and um, be next to it. And then it wrapped around, which is what I was showing you before um, here when I had the red hero, the, the contents float around that guy. So, um, you see the same thing here, it flowed around to the side and then down on the and, and to the bottom, right? And so I can say on this one, I can say style. Because style equals to, um, let's leave the background color as that. And um, I'm going to say um, the width is um, oh, and so maybe I, want, I don't want it to wrap around the bottom, so I want to say, I want you to float to the left also, right? And maybe I want to fix the width to be, I don't know, six, 600 pixels or something like that. And so, um, for the footer, I want your style, uh, come on. And so um, I want to clear both, you know, any floating or absolute position thing. So I say clear both. And um, I want you to take off the whole thing. All right. So now if you look, if there's not enough width that I want, and you could do stuff like minimum width or maximum width, but I just said width for now. Is uh, 600, 100, uh, whatever, 600 pixels, yeah. And so if I keep opening this, once it's 600 pixels on the side, notice it jumps up and it, and it goes there next to that guy. And then it's not enough, it goes below it, right? 
and so now it doesn't wrap around as it did before but notice that my footer my footer drops down and it too maintains the width of the header so this is basic setting to give you that kind of layout where you have a header you have a footer that stays in place and then your navigation you know you set some size and it stays there and then your content area now this is not very fluid design as you could see if i was to, to load this on a tablet or a um, phone you see it's not wrapping around nicely and so on and so but it's certainly more flexible than if i use a um, easier to use than and more flexible than using a table like a table doesn't allow me to move them around and there are a number of other things you can do with divs yeah, and so instead of going over i continue with showing you all the other options which i don't care to learn anyway i mean i did them a long time back but there's something that's taken over um, from this and so people tended to use you know annotated this you know give them names like header footer and so on and so again the um, group that's in charge for the html standard they just went ahead and t came out with some new tags that are actually call like header footer nav um, section article um, just to help you better organize your page so it's implicit when you kind of read the the HTML, you know the intent, right? So if I wanted this to be a header, you know it using me saying, you know, diff header and blah, blah, blah. No, I can actually name this header. Now, before I move on, and, uh, well, so you see I have this file here called CSS. I'm not going to show it really, but the, the styles that I put in here, remember those are the Castadian style sheet. This is the language you write it in, and this is the styles in which you can modify it. And so one way you can do it is by putting an attribute. Another way to do it is to say, um, I have a style tag. And then within the style tag, I'm going to put my style. And so I'll cut that out and I'll actually paste it. Well, what am I trying to affect? Well, before when I add the values in here, it was obvious that I'm trying to affect the style of this div with the name ID. But if I put it here, how do I know? So I have to say, number meaning that a number sign meaning that i'm talking about the a tag that has been identified by its id and then i'm going to say here i'll paste the style okay and so this is this have the same effect and so let me see if i could beautify this a little bit right and so notice how um, things look the same over there even though i can't change it okay there's just another way you could put it here and again, I'll move this one up here, and I'll do the same thing. I have the style in here, and its ID is site nav. Okay, so I'm going to cut it from here. I'm going to delete this attribute. Its name is site nav. So I put punk site, site nav, and I'll paste the style here. And I'll um, select all of it and beautify. All right? And the result is the same thing. So this allows you now to not have those very long tag name with the attributes. It's easier to come and modify this. You have the nice syntax highlighting, which you don't get here. And you can extract this now <laughs> and put it in a file. We're not covering CSS, so I'm not going to show that. But just trust me, just like, you know, we didn't cover JavaScript. You have to show that or you can do the same thing. Anyway, so just trust me, you can extract this. This is your style sheet. You could put it here. Now, the advantage of being able to do it is not only does it easier to read, you have the syntax highlighting, you have, and so on, but you can do things like if you know that you want to apply the same style to a number of div or a different section of your page, you can put them here. So, for you could use a class. So, ID, remember, only when you use an ID for that page, it's unique to only one element, right? Or one tag can have the same ID as in header but what if we wanted to use the what if we wanted to say um, that everything that's an article anything that's an article let's just say I know there's an article tag but okay let's say anything that's a comment anything that's a comment should have um, should be have text align centered right and notice how you get a, a help there um, the color of it should be I don't know uh green and maybe um the blah, 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 what else could we say the background 
color or maybe I want the border on it actually border to be you know kind of we didn't cover border but um, border style should be you know dash lines or something dash okay and um, and so let's see what it might look like so this I'm defining here when I use like this I'm talking about a element or tag I know there's no tag called comment if I use a pong I'm talking about the tag that any tag that has the, the ID you know whatever site nav or whatever comes after this pong but remember only one per page I could re use site nav on another page but within here I can't have this div call ID site nav and another one with the ID same site nav but I can do a class and that's when you put a period and what it allow you to do is to say this you can say class and then give the class name comment and so now if you notice as soon as I use class and I use comment it applies it to this diff and the advantage of that now is I can reuse class on multiple elements I can say class comment and now notice both of my um, my divs here since I use the same class the comment class on it gets the center and gets the you know aquamarine and blah 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 and the border right and so that's one way of course it, the styles were applied I had color applied here on the cop the class and I was at color applied on the you know the ID so there's some idea of preference and all that stuff that you don't you don't need to really worry about because it's obvious it would stake in preference in this case right you know I had the class here would change the color to aquamarine and it didn't take effect because um, the ID overrode it but this, you don't need to worry about that no but it could you know lead if you ever try to style something it's not taken then you can kind of watch and see now um, one of the things you can do with this editor bracket is if you right click here and do quick edit well we don't actually have a style sheet link but if you had a style sheet link it would open up and show you um, which style styles are being applied to that div or that element and so you could modify it but we'll get to that when we start doing external style sheet we don't actually have an external style sheet and so um i lost all the stuff i copied before Ugh. i copied some stuff that you know i had before when i started this but anyway you, you, you can see how i changed the stuff that i i created what i had before i think when i started i had um my whatever club in for or something like that and save this refresh yeah. and then of course I didn't had um, I had white and the background color was um, black and I certainly didn't use a class so I didn't had you know the effect of the class and then uh, I can't remember what color I used for the side nav here but um, you know you can imagine I thought href equals to something and I could say uh, my resume and then um, I could do um, href um, you know club info whatever um, these are inline tags so I have to do the break myself there are other ways to do a side menu I could have used a on ordered list and all this other stuff or order list I can set that it doesn't show the bullets so there are a number of ways um, and uh, let's see here um, well I can't remember what else I put href Um, okay, I don't know. All right, so um, this is an example of a side menu, and then of course, in terms of content, um, my screen is too narrow, so you're seeing it um, there. But if I assume that my page is this width, then I could put all the content here about whatever. Like I said, 
you can nest these t div tags, right? And I could put more um, block tags in here, like, you know, p tag. So I'm just making up content, right? I, mean, I just want to give you an idea. And so you can see. No, of course, this, um, my tag here didn't, um, my uh, site navigation here needs to grow to make sure that oh, if I'm going to put it in a different color, like here, it shows correctly, right? Um, maybe I need to style my, uh, I need to style my, my, tag it up my footer tag so let's go do that um, so dang footer there let's paste that and let's do color um, white and match it up to the thing and then background color um, black All right and maybe I want that text align center also All right I could choose like how heavy I want the font to be so you know these are already like bigger and I could do things like for the heading I want if you look there's not much padding around it so I could do some padding right I could say five pixels for example or maybe ten pixels and then here you know for the footer padding uh, maybe five pixels at the bottom there and then I could choose the font weight and so on but um, here um, I could say my site nav um, height is 100% probably. Uh, well, I don't want 100% of because now it's, it's pushing it off the page. But uh, you know, I'll have to play with it. Maybe um, I need a, some. So I could see. Uh, I can see how much content I'm putting into the site here and how, how big I want it to show up on my page. Which, as you could see. There's some issues, right, with me having to figure out what sites to use. And here's my the, my content. I need some padding there also, and I need some padding on the site there. So I mean, like go my um, padding dash left, maybe um, ten pixels. So you know, it's kind of half the site, whatever. So you get the idea um, uh, of you know how you can use divs. To lay out your page and the flexibility there so I'm gonna cut this here I don't want this to go out go on too long what I'd say is I just wanted to introduce diff but I do have a way for you to be able to lay out your page much easier more consistently it's fluid it's gonna work well on big white screen like on a television or desktop or on really really small screen like a uh, mobile device tab um, whether it's a tablet or a phone and so the fact that I don't want to spend a lot of time going through all the nitty gritties and all that stuff features of div is because I think there are easier ways and as think technology progress and people use things, they come up with easier ways of doing things and there's no need for you to go back and do the hard way just for the heck of it. So definitely just trust me and know how there are easy ways to lay out your website. I'll show you that in the next video just because it's going to come following up on this this stuff. Um, I'll show you how to do that quickly um, because we're going to cover it in more detail later. And then after that, we jump out to the intermediate and we jump into advanced and we talk about forms, how to design forms. And then after that, we jump out of um, HTML and probably do some CSS and then some JavaScript and we keep going. All right. I will try and make these come start coming. The videos come more often, maybe at least once a week and twice a week. But all right. Uh, thanks for bearing with me and I'll cut this here before it gets too long. All right. Uh, this is just a taste of div and I think if you just see some of the things I can do on here and you just understand that that's possible, you don't really need to know a lot more. All right. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye.